Welcome back. I mean, who will solve Nigeria's problems? It's you and I. We've got to find a way out for the sake of our children and our children's children. We've got to find a way out of this mess, if, if I may call it so. Nigeria has so much potential, and the future of Nigeria can be very, very bright. But it depends on the decisions we make today. Not just the political decisions, but also the economic cult and cultural decisions that we make today. So many things to look at when you are talking about Nigeria. But let's move on to the great Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. Last year, we released our list of top 20 books for 2021. And her recent book, Notes on Grief, was one of those books we listed. Fantastic book. It's a book that she wrote after her dad passed on. It's such a deep, such an incisive book. It's a bit different from what we know Chimamanda to write about normally in terms of, what, I mean, in terms of the books she has published in the past. She's well known for her fictional, dynamic fictional works like uh, Half of a Yellow Sun and so on. But this is a special book, Notes on Grief. It's her new book. And she recently came to Lagos and did a reading at Alliance Francais. Now, enjoy this. It's the first event of Alliance Francaise Mike Adenuga Cultural Centre and Artistic Season and the first guest for 2022 is a special one. The DNA of this centre since its inception has been to support at the highest level a new cultural vision for the city of Lagos. And I cannot think of any better way to pursue this journey and to start this new year with magnificence than by hosting a wonderfully, wonderfully talented Nigerian bestseller author known worldwide. And I feel therefore extremely privileged to introduce this evening with Mrs. Shimamanda Ngozi Adichie, a loyal friend of the Alliance Francaise of Lagos, who will provide us with an inspiring and insightful conversation this evening on her latest book, an exquisitely written and moving essay on grief and loss. In 2020, renowned author Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie lost her father and about a year later her mother. These losses plunged her as such experiences would do to anyone into grief. Soon after, Chimamanda decided to share her thoughts on grief in a book that is now inspiring people around the world. The book, Notes on Grief, was selected as one of Channel's Book Club's top 20 Nigerian books for 2021. For the first time since the book was released, a major reading event is organised with Chimamanda as the special guest. It was one of the oddest things. There are no words to say to one who is bereaved, but to just be present, to call and say, my friend, I'm here. If you need anything, I'm here. And one of the people to know this, one of the first to call me all the way from America plus one and say nothing while saying everything is our guest for this evening. In a fog of grief, I remember your phone call. It is one thing to say our children should bury us it is another to experience it. Nothing prepares you for this. But we have someone much better than I am in saying this thing. Someone whose notes on our experience you have all read. And you are yet to meet her. In typical fashion, Chimamanda goes on to introduce and read from Notes on Grief, which is detailed, incisive and moving. From England, my brother set up the Zoom calls every Sunday our boisterous lockdown ritual. Two siblings joining from Lagos, three of us from the United States, and my parents, sometimes echoing and cracking, from Abba, our ancestral hometown in southeastern Nigeria. On 7th June, there was my father, only his forehead on the screen, as usual, because he never quite knew how to hold his phone during video calls. 
Move your phone a bit, Daddy, one of us would say. On 8th June, Oke went to Abba to see him and said he looked tired. On 9th June, I kept our chat brief so that he could rest. He laughed quietly when I did my playful imitation of a relative. Catch you four, he said. Good night. His last words to me. On 10 June, he was gone. My brother Chooks called to tell me, and I came undone. My four-year-old daughter says I scared her. She gets down on her knees to demonstrate, her small clenched fist rising and falling. And her mimicry makes me see myself as I was, utterly unraveling, screaming, and pounding the floor. The news is like a vicious uprooting. I am yanked away from the world I have known since childhood, and I am resistant. My father read the newspaper that afternoon. He joked with O.K. about shaving before his appointment with the kidney specialist the next day. He discussed his hospital test results on the phone with my sister, Ijoma, who is a doctor. And so how can this be? But there he is. Okay is holding a phone over my father's face, and my father looks asleep, his face relaxed, beautiful in repose. Our Zoom call is beyond surreal, all of us weeping and weeping and weeping in different parts of the world, looking in disbelief at the father we adore, now lying still on a hospital bed. It happened a few minutes before midnight, Nigerian time, with O.K. by his side and Chooks on speakerphone. I stare and stare at my father. My breathing is difficult. Is this what shock means? That the air turns to blue? Why are my sides so sore and achy? It's from crying, I'm told. I did not know that we cry with our muscles. Thank you so much, Shimamanda. But it is more than a reading session. There are conversations around grieving, and the guest author is happy to respond to them and share her thoughts on matters relating to grieving, including how people react to those who grieve in Nigeria. There's another thing, I think I'm going to take this opportunity to vent about the Nigerian approach to grief. Um, you know, we just need to stop it, honestly. <laughs> you know, people are so quick to tell you to move on. Okay, the funeral went well, okay. And you're like, actually, after the funeral, that's actually when it begins, right? That's when you suddenly realize, my God, I do not have the distraction of planning a funeral. This thing is real. But, but I've noticed in particular that it's my um, Nigerian well-wishers who wanted to, get, you know, I think in some ways there's also that human thing where we, we're all uncomfortable with grief. We don't know what to do with it, right? Even I am uncomfortable with grief, other people's grief. But, but this idea that sometimes it, it, it felt to me and continues to feel to me that Nigerians can be very dismissive of grief right? and, or, or the way that we hide, we hide pain behind religion. I'm just so over that. So um, I'm sure none of the lovely people here are like that. But... Uh, no, we, we and, and maybe it's also one of the reasons I wanted to do this, that I think, I think we should be more, we should talk more about grief, the realities of it, you know? I think people suffer in silence because you're supposed to be strong. And, and even that, as a compliment, bothers me when people say, um, you know, be strong. And I'm thinking, my, my life just fell apart. Why the hell should I be strong? I feel that not only our spirits and our lives have to show that that love has gone. Like the book, the event ends up being deeply touching, engaging, comforting, thought-provoking and hope-inducing. I hope you've had a good time with us on the show today. As always, we're very happy to get your feedback through any of our social media platforms displayed on your screen. And don't forget, we are back on Twitter. Oh, we've missed Twitter so much. Now we're back on Twitter. So 
send us a tweet, send us messages through Twitter, and we'll be very happy to respond to you. But it's not just Twitter. You can send us messages via Facebook. You can send us an email and so on. We're always excited to hear from you. This is where we have to end the show today. My name is Ola Kunle Kasumo. Remember, one great book can change your life. Bye-bye.